Good evening, everyone. It's really the nighttime. It's really, well, it's not that late, but it's really past my uh, my bedtime. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, part of being um, a mother, employee, business owner, whatever it is, is that you got to maximize your time. You got to maximize your time. So while I was up, I um I had this okay, so I've been having some technical difficulties. And so I had I've been trying to piece these videos together and edit them and do all that cute little stuff. But for some reason, it is not coming out the way that it's supposed to. Like it keep it's not converting the file the way it's supposed to. So anyway, nonetheless. Um, where there's a will, there is a way. So I decided to do what I have not done in quite some time. And that is a um, kind of like a healing generation. It's not, it is, but then it's not. It's really my review of the movie Creed 3. So I'm, uh, I didn't do my proper introductions. I am the Aquarian Chancellor. I am your host this evening of the Girl Get Up podcast. But this is kind of like a bonus thing behind the scenes because it didn't go to, you know, I just explained everything and go the way it's planned. So this is kind of like a little bonus behind the scenes. It's the, it's the podcast, but it's not really the podcast. It's the healing generations, but not really the healing gen- You know what I'm saying? Y'all follow me. Y'all follow me. You just got to... Um, Work with what you got. And so it's content. They say content is king, right? So um, <laughs> that said, I did, um, like I said, I've been rec- recording a whole lot of videos, not everything. Um, I've been, you know, but that said, I had did a review of the movie Creed 3. And so I had wanted to, um, that's the, the video I was trying to piece together. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and play. And then, first of all, let me just say this, okay? Let me say this. I'm saying it up front. Saying it up front. I'm giving you a warning now. I, it was like 8,000 degrees outside, okay? My lash was falling off. It was coming up on the side. I probably went to sleep on them. Okay. I don't care. That is real. It's real. I don't care. If I hear anybody say something in the comments about my lash, I'm telling you, I'm blocking you. <laughs> Cause I just set up in city. So but I already know how people do, you know, people it's gonna be somebody. It's gonna be somebody. But nonetheless, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Um, It's more about the observation and the perception of what I'm saying more so than my lash or any other thing anybody else got to nitpick about. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to share my screen. I haven't been on um, this app in a long time. So let's just see how this works out. Let me make sure my audio is, um, is everything is good. Do a little, uh, I try to do a little test drive run, all that good stuff, but you know how it goes. Okay, so let's just do it this way and do it that way. And then let's do a little chair and let's do a little high. Be careful sharing screen audio. If you have guests, they will not hear themselves. I got it. So let's go. I don't have to link the two. I'm sure it was a way that you can pick up, but it doesn't work that way. But um, as I left off, um, there's some other things, writing and stuff that I want to complete. And um, although the career and the, the developed um, curriculum, he retired uh, Instagram thing. Um, I watched the movie Creed 3 and I thought it was really, really, really good because it just talks about everything that, you know what I'm saying, 
I've been talking about Sapphire Party doing healing generations. As I started talking about healing generations, and, and you know what I'm saying, like a lot of the past stuff, okay, so the whole plot is he's retired, you know, he got his little um, business now, his little boxing business, he got a, a, a gym and everything, and he's still stay connected to the boxing community. Okay, I think in the show, when the movie, he has, um, he has a fighter that's all that's out there. So he hired a team of, of you know, trainers and stuff like that, and they all practice. So he has this gym. Okay. And then, but the movie is about his past, really. Because, which I, you know what I'm saying, I keep talking about something that happened in the past that was triggered by the plot. I couldn't pick up, because like I said, I was in and out of the film. It's very difficult now for me to just sit and watch. But, um, so I was in and out, but I think it was like an old friend or old, I don't know if it was like an older cousin or an older friend from, um, from the, I think it was like in a group home together. It, and please do not, this is, I, this is what I could gather because I was in and out. <laughs> I don't know if that was a cousin or like, it feel like they was in a group home. And I kind of feel like they got out, you know what I'm saying, like they were doing the whole boxing thing together. And I do believe that this, the guy was older than him. Oh, man, look at that. The dude was older than him. He kind of took him up under his wing with the whole boxing thing, and they were they were really young and everything. But um, I kind of felt like, and like I said, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like something happened with the dude with with the. It seemed as though like there was a dude that had took advantage of them in some type of way. That's what I kind of picked up on. But, like I said, I'm going to have to watch it again to kind of be correct and precise about it. I don't want to focus on that part. Long story short is when the dude um, when they were younger, flashback, the dude Adonis had sex the guy that apparently worked at I think it's a group home. And um, the dude, the other dude, I want to say Rodney, um, they came out, they said they were beating up the dude, and then Rodney had pulled a gun, the police pulled up, Rodney went to jail, Adonis ran. That's the last time they seen each other, okay? Now, a caveat to it is that the mama, Adonis' mama, the dude and Rodney had been reaching out to Adonis the whole time, and Adonis kind of like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't know, but he still know that, that he kind of went to jail for him, so to speak. Like, they both attacked the dude, but Adonis had got away with it. The dude took the charge. Like, okay, talking about decision making and stuff like that. But, um, in the program. But the, the dude take, took the charge for them or whatever. Ended up going to jail for 18 years. He finally, they finally looked back up, and the whole time the dude Rodney is really holding a grudge against um, Adonis for never checking up on him. Like you know, y'all know how I go that whole, you know, you, you know, somebody you don't never check up on your folks while they, you know, uh, locked up or whatever like that. And I guess the dude Rodney had held it, held, held some type of grudge about that over the years. So he gets out, they end up linking back up. The dude, Adon, is feeling, you know, that guilt, okay, for something that happened in the past, you know, so he's operating out of a place of guilt. He brings the dude, Rodney, in on the way the whole time. The dude, Rodney, got some type of grudge against him because he's feeling like he abandoned him, right? Yeah, um, so he bringing him in, give him an opportunity, but then the dude gets too big, you know what I'm saying, in his mind, like, he think that he, you know what I'm saying, like, he still, he still got an issue. He still got an issue. So he starts to, 
use the term bite the hand and feed him pretty much. Now his, he feel like he done got a, a certain notoriety that he can start doing with the person who put him on. Okay, and so, um, because like I said the whole time, he's feeling some type of way. Now, because he's still dealing with uh, the, the feeling of abandonment and anger, he has a certain boxing style that is he where he fights dirty. Okay. And so he lets his anger get the best of him. So he starts not making bad decisions because he's operating out of a place. He's not operating from a place of peace. His thing is he's coming with that chaos energy because his thing is he going he's by any means necessary type of person. And when you operate like that, all logic go out the window. You operate in all strictly emotion. So that's why I said he was that secret hate that he had. It was feeding that negative that negativity. Like, okay, I'm gonna get like I'm gonna show this dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, they end up fighting against each other. And I thought it was very, very, very creatively and awesomely done where they do the fight thing where it's just them to like they let you know like this is some some real shit that you know what I'm saying like this um we got to battle this shit out like this some real personal shit like fuck everybody in the oh, excuse my language forget everybody in the audience forget you know what I'm saying like this ain't about no kind of this ain't about none of this is strictly me and you and so like the the creators and the producer whoever the, whoever um did that thing like that whoever's decision that was that was awesomely done i like that because it let the the viewers know that oh this is personal this ain't got nothing to do about no audience no title no built no nothing this is me and you because it was something the foundation of it was from childhood like before there was fame, it was me and you. And so that scene reiterated that. Before it was the fame, it was me and you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I like that. Like that scene right there, I was like, I didn't put my phone down. And I was like, what? Oh, this shit is actual. So anyway. So anyway, so I like that. That was that was really, really good. And I like that they showed Adonis, even though he won, he fought clean up one. And the dude, you know, he tried to get his little sneak dishes and stuff in there. He was fighting dirty. But um, Adonis still won, which is, you know, you have the protagonist and the antagonist. And so, of course, the hero always wins. But um, what it also showed, like, after he won, he took the opportunity to make amends to settle with the past. He apologized. He was, in, you gotta think of it in the fact that he's earned his leadership position. He earned that. And honestly, the people like around him ooh, you know, did not want him to fight because like he then went out there, he got beat, he got bruised. He, you know what I'm saying, he suffered his losses, he suffered, he, you know what I'm saying, he earned his win. And so, you know what I'm saying, he had some, some health challenges because of it. And um, they didn't really think that it was a good idea for him to go out there. And at first you saw that because, you know what I'm saying, like, he had that defeat, that defeated spirit because he was letting his failure, what he perceived as a failure, get to him, like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't show up for the dude. You know what I'm saying? So that messed up his confidence. He's getting beat up in the rain and all of this other stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? By people who were less proven than him. And so, um, you know what I'm saying? Because he was feeling guilty. And the whole time the dude would hurt, I like would hurt. He from the home thing. Um, he kept telling him like, dude, you know what I'm saying? I see what you're trying to do. I see you trying to make a man. But this dude is not ready for that. Like, he's still, his mentality was still locked up. Like, even the dude, he asked him how, how long he'd been out. He's like, damn, I just been out a week. 
But you know what I'm saying? Like physically he was out, but mentally he was still stuck back there. Like I got a point to prove. Like you abandoned me. I'm gonna show your ass. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm. You know what I'm saying? So so that was really really good. When he finally got to the point where he's like, you know what? I have to forgive myself. Like and then he didn't know that. He had an opportunity to, you know, to connect with the dude, but the mother, her and her influence, um, she didn't feel like it was good for her son to, to maintain that relationship because he was, you know what I'm saying, he was progressing in his career and she thought she was protecting him, mother's instinct. Um, you know, so he kind of got into his mother's butt about that because the opportunity for him to kind of settle things a long time ago had been there, but he was just unaware of it. Although he did step up and take the leadership and apologize because he's like, you know what, I should have checked on you. I should have. So I thought that was a great leadership um, quality that they portrayed in the, in the movie because he was able to go back and, like I said, forget the belt, forget the the money, the fame, and all of the, the clothes in the car. Who's it, Trey Song? And the success. Forget all of that. Like, we here speaking as men, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sorry that I did not check on you. I apologize. Like, he really meant that. And um, I think that offered to do Rodney some sort of solace that, that he can, you know what I'm saying, um, make peace with his past. Because a lot of times, I'm going to tell you something, when stuff like that happens, then I don't think that he killed the dude. I think that, you know what I'm saying, that he just pulled the gun out on him. But still, when you've been um, incarcerated physically, but more so incarcerated in other minds, um, you're imprisoned by something that you have done. Um, I think that it, you know, it, it stomach his growth a little bit mentally. So what it is, is it allows for him to make that peace so that he can go get caught up with his wife. Okay, so what does that look like? That looks like, a, you know what I'm saying, you're going out, you can get a job, because he just did 18 years, he needs a job now. You know what I'm saying, he needs to, luckily, hopefully, it didn't, expand on the fact that he made some type of bones in the Boston community, so I don't know if he's able to um, go forth with any of that, but, you know, employment now, now he can focus on starting a family, finding a wife, dating, you know, experience and love, all of these things that are um, me as a person who has not made those same mistakes take for granted. So I thought it was a really good movie. Hold on. I thought it was a really, really great movie. Um, you know, I thought it was really, really good. Um, it was good. It was really, really good. And then, y'all, y'all know Michael B is my birthday twin. And he was looking at him and I like, uh, John, what's his name, Jonathan? When I tell y'all that, that, that back work was like, I was like, oh, they was looking real strong out there. So, I thought it was a really good movie. Oh, I love Felicia Rashad. She was the mama. Um, what's her name? Tess? I forgot her, her last name. But, um, I liked her. She was, she didn't, um, she was very supportive. Let me tell you something about that. Um, she was not the typical she was very supportive. She did not go against him at all or anything that she wanted to do. She spoke her mind. She stood firm on what her beliefs were. But when it was time for him to say, oh, this is what I need to do. I need to redeem myself by going back in the ring. She said, well, that's what you need to do. Bam, she left it at that. She ain't go against him. She ain't, you know what I'm saying, no attitude, no lip. She allowed for him to leave. This is what I'm saying. I thought it was an awesome movie. I thought it was awesome, 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 awesome. Like, it showed roles. It showed healthy roles. 
his mama over um stepped her boundaries he checked her in a way that it was respectful i thought it was healthy um so healthy um depiction is what i mean to say of um of us in leadership position it's so you know what I'm saying? i thought it was awesome Oh, okay. I think I'm back. But um, I hope you guys were a was able to hear that. I didn't, I, for some reason, it just really, really, it doesn't translate well when I'm trying to replay and recreate and edit and all of those other good stuff. But I thought that was really, 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 really important because um, I want to just stick with the protagonist and the antagonist dynamic um, and referencing the Infinite Dreamers program and why I started uh, I started the program off with chapter one or module one being making the decision is because first of all the, the, the relationship between the two between the the two main characters Adonis which is um, Michael B and then Rodney who's played by Jonathan is because of that that history when they were children they had a decision to make and at that time they both made a wrong choice okay but from there, um, I think that it was just decision making. It was their decision making at the time. And um, that's why I think that I thought it was so important to start off the chapter one of the of the program talking about how important um, it is with, with your life choices. Sometimes we take things for granted. We take situations for granted, people, places and things. OK. And um those are the very things that as we get older, okay, it becomes the roadblocks that we put in front of ourselves when it comes to pursuing the things that we want to do for our lives. Not just the nine to five, not just, you know what I'm saying? It's getting out, speaking, um, putting yourself out there. It plays on you. Those are the very things that play on your self-worth. So I thought that that movie Creed 3 was a very awesome movie talking about um, decision making, redemption, leadership, family. Um, so it, it, it touched on so many, so many things. I thought it was an awesome, awesome movie. If you have not had a chance to, uh, to check that movie out, please do. It's Creed. It's three. They're... Um, I don't remember one and two being that good. That one right there. I mean, it was so many times that, you know, I put the phone down to do some, to, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm multitasking. <laughs> and it was so many times I had to put it down and be like, oh my God, what is going on? What? You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's an awesome movie. If you, um, if you don't catch any of them, catch that one, Creed 3. So with that, I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I just wanted to uh, put that together and throw that out there because I thought it was really, really awesome. And it is a prime example of um, why programs like the Infinite Dreamers program is so important. We want to touch youth when they're at that pivotal age. OK, and um, the great thing about the movie is that it shows you the two different roads, the two paths. OK, and so um, I thought it was awesome. So with that, I'm not going to take up too much time. Um, if like I said, I don't want to hear nothing in the comments about that lash. OK, <laughs> I caught it after the fact, but it's all good. It is what it is. So um, with that, I'm out of here. Take care, everybody. I hope you guys have a good evening. Bye bye.